This is Dr. Neil Burney. He lives in Bermuda, a stunning Atlantic island 640 miles east of North Carolina, USA. So now the, yeah. He spent the last 30 years practicing veterinary medicine, but now he's transferring his veterinary skills to help save, protect, and learn more about the incredible marine life of Bermuda's ocean. This is a completely wild shark. Alongside his dedicated ocean vet team are a number of scientists, yeah, this and probably, yeah, marine biologists, off the back fin. and specialist master divers, helping to perform a number of unique and dangerous procedures in a bid to safeguard critically important marine species. Together, the team will be fitting satellite tags to huge tiger sharks, saving precious green turtles, dissecting giant blue marlin, and obtaining unique toxin samples from 45-ton migrating humpback whales. Yay! Whoa! My knees are like jello. Yes, man. This is Bermuda, home to Dr. Neil Burney, the ocean vet. The green sea turtle is one of the most recognized and loved reptiles in all of the world's oceans. Like many marine species, these turtles are under threat. Poachers, pollution, and fishing nets are all factors that have placed this animal on the endangered species list. Annie, hi, Peter, Jennifer, great to see you. In this episode, Neil and the Ocean Vet crew will be working alongside the Bermuda Turtle Project performing a number of unique procedures to monitor the health and population dynamics of Bermuda's juvenile green sea turtles. It's right there. Neil will also be working with the Bermuda Aquarium's Turtle Stranding Unit to recover, rehabilitate, and re-release injured turtles back into the wild. Finally, Neil and Choi will attach a satellite tracking tag to a larger, more mature green turtle in a bid to gather unique data which is vital to support the ongoing conservation and protection of this internationally loved species. Neil and his ocean vet team have been invited to assist the Bermuda Turtle Project by project leader Jennifer Gray a lady who has dedicated most of her life to the study and conservation of green sea turtles. To close off the circle, so. She is supported by doctors Peter and Ann Malin, the project's scientific directors and veterans of the Bermuda Turtle Project. Peter! Hey, great to see you. Annie, great, great to, to have you out here today. Ah, oh. Excellent, been a while. <laughs> Jennifer, what are we gonna be doing today? Catching lots of turtles, Neil. Oh, you guys ready? Can't wait. Excellent. So, who are all the participants here? Can we have a list of names quickly? Who's who? Start from here. I'm Alice. This international mix of participants will assist with the capture of the turtles. This process is quite straightforward. A large, deep net is used to encircle an area of seagrass beds inhabited by the turtles. As the turtles try to escape, they swim into the soft netting. So these are all our course participants, and it's our job to get the turtles to the surface as soon as they enter the net. We're going to then bring them back to endurance and work them up. And hopefully one of them will be big enough that we'll be able to put a satellite tag on it. Right, right? Yeah. yeah. Satellite tag data, along with DNA and blood research, is enabling this project to build a visual web of migratory paths, populations, and breeding sites helping to improve the worldwide conservation of this beautiful reptile. So we've got the turtle that swam into the net, brought it to the surface. Liana is disentangling it from the net, and I'm giving the hand signal to the boat so that they know we have one to be picked up. Choi Aming, Neil's right-hand man and series marine biologist, is on the capture boat with Jennifer Gray, collecting the retrieved turtles. Okay, so Neil is dead ahead, and he's got another turtle. And there's also about four or five others that some of the other participants have. So turtles everywhere. We've got to get this guy in the boat as quick as possible. I'm not, I'm not sure how many times we see this. I think it's only Ocean Vet, where one has wrapped around the other one. So this is definitely uh, a boat disentanglement here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
So for every one of these guys, there should be 99 more in the ocean and we've taken them out. So we've got to do everything we can to preserve all these green turtles because this is the last of them. Retrieving these turtles is no easy task. Constantly entangling them, then holding them at the surface is challenging. These reptiles can weigh in excess of 20 kilos. So it requires quite a bit of teamwork <laughs> to get these bigger turtles out of the net. But Joy, if you can grab it. Yeah. Okay. This actually may be a candidate for our satellite tag. It's quite a large turtle. So far, we've been out all of about 10 or 15 Eight, minutes, and we've got nine turtles in the boat, and we still got a few more to grab. We've seen a few swimming around, darting in the uh, sand, so good haul thus far, and we're probably only about halfway through. Even the smaller turtles can present a challenge. Having the capture boat close by ensures the welfare and safety of every turtle. All right, great guys, this guy's a little too entangled for me, so I'm gonna pass him up to you guys. Okay, luckily he's small enough. Oh, I can just pull the whole thing out. Okay, buddy. So, that little turtle was a little too badly entangled for me to get him out whilst he's in the water. So we simply bring him onto the capture boat, and Choi and Cameron are gonna disentangle him. I'm just gonna wet down the rest of our turtles, keep them nicely cool while they're waiting in the capture boat to get back to the endurance. All right, this is our smallest guy yet. Isn't he cute? So we're just gonna stick him in the back and a beautiful small specimen. Fantastic. There you go, you got it nice. Come on. Green sea turtles are air breathers, so being out of the water is not harmful to them. By cushioning the turtles on these foam noodles, Neil and the team ensure they remain calm and secure during the tagging and sampling procedures. So, every turtle that comes on board gets scanned with this microchip scanner. This is exactly the same one that I use at my vet practice, and Michaela has seen these at ends meet because we use these on the dogs and cats. So, we're going to scan this animal, and we're going to scan this left flipper, and we're going to see if there's a tag in it. And this one doesn't have one. We're going to keep moving around the group. We're going to come to this one. Ah, here we go. We can now go and find the details of when this animal was chipped previously, what its history was, and what its tag number was that it shed. Because it's obviously lost the external tag that was applied at the same time as the pit tag. So 14 yeah. August yeah, so 2007, she was marked. 14 yeah. August 2007, almost seven years ago, and she's back here. And I say she with impunity, right? Because she's been sent. Well, I have to, I have to look at the database to tell you. Oh, OK, all right. We don't have that in that. Some of the turtles don't have the microchips installed. So after fitting some new external fin tags, Neil and Peter implant new microchips. So, we've got a perfect ID number that's unique to this animal. It means researchers can find this, fishermen will be able to identify this creature by simply reading this tag. You seeing these here, Jen? Do these look like healed yeah. bite marks to bite you? Marks. They do, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Neil! Oh. Neil around? Yeah. Choi and Jennifer spot signs of injury to one of the turtle's flippers, so Neil comes in to assess the animal. I think there's one more on the front as well, man. So if we compare this rear flipper to the yeah. one on the turtle next to him, you can see there's two quite clear semicircular indentations where pieces of tissue have been removed and have then healed over. Yeah. And the same on his back flipper here, two discrete bite marks and then something from the front also. It's common for these turtles to sustain injuries as they grow up in the waters around Bermuda. Predators such as Galapagos sharks and even much larger tiger sharks are known to feed on these turtles. Anyway, he seems to be none the worse for it, and it's obviously he's able to swim fine. It's just a little bit of an interesting. Uh, They've healed really nicely. Yeah. yeah. These turtles can weigh up to 180 kilos or 400 pounds when mature. Weighing them is an important part of monitoring their health. Okay, so we've just strapped in our turtle. You can see we've got a rope on each fin. We've just put him into the scale. You can see he hangs quite nicely. Seems reasonably relaxed. We're just waiting for the scale to get a reading on his exact weight. So this guy is about 21.6 kilograms. Yeah. So that's a good size animal. They're solid little guys. Next, Neil needs to take some blood. 
So we're just preparing this turtle to have blood samples drawn for DNA analysis and for sexing purposes. There it is. That's sufficient. Just a little more. Just a little more. There's all our DNA that we need. Plenty. Put that blue lid on there. These DNA samples will be compared with that of other international green sea turtle populations. If there's a match, then the turtle project can determine what region that specific juvenile green turtle has come from to reach Bermuda. A lot of blood to spend. Today. Sure, sure. Now that the blood samples have been taken, Choi, Robert, and some of the other participants are processing them in the onboard lab. Now, you can see there's a slight color variant as I pull these out. Uh, these more yellowish tinged serums here, they're from older turtles, and the thinking is it's a pigment from all the seagrass that they're eating, so that's kind of neat. So the younger turtles have a clear serum, and the older turtles have uh, sort of a, a yellowish serum to them. Okay, oh, that's a much more clear sample. So if you look at these two, you can see that one is a lot lighter. That's probably from a younger turtle. And that yellowish stuff, those are the pigments from the seagrass that we were speaking about. Once the blood sampling is complete and the serum is extracted, Neil is ready to release these turtles back into the wild. So we've had a great day here at Somerset Long Bay. We've got a whole lot of turtles that we've worked up and we're getting ready to release them. We've kept one back because we're going to put that satellite tag on that one creature. It's been a wonderful project oh, over, the last, over yeah. the last 40 years, this study has been going on and it's providing data that not only protects these turtles here in Bermuda, but throughout their Caribbean range. Right. So I'm going to get into the water and uh, we're going to get these guys released and let them right. swim away. The research that's been conducted today will make a huge difference in the fight to preserve green sea turtle populations, not just in Bermuda, but all over the world. That was the last one. They're all gone. Good yeah, work. No excellent. Great, so yeah. Really good. All the turtles got released. We collected a whole bunch of data. It was a fantastic day all around. Great success for Ocean Vet and the Bermuda Turtle Project. Thanks, so guys. great job, guys. Awesome. There we go. It's like a nursery. The Turtle Project is not alone in its battle to save this species. Neil is assisting another project which helps ensure the survival of Bermuda's green sea turtles. This is the turtle exhibit at the Bermuda Aquarium Museum and Zoo. And these two girls were actually hatched here on the sand beach you can see behind me. There is also a wildlife rehabilitation center here at the aquarium where injured or sick turtles are brought for their recovery. The Bermuda Turtle Project works hard to ensure the health of green turtles in Bermuda, but sadly some are injured by the ingestion of plastic, ingestion of other toxins, or even being injured by boats. They're brought here and when they're recovered, they're released back into the wild. So it's somewhere on this beach. Oh yeah, there it is. It's right there. Neil is working with Patrick from the Turtle Stranding Network. They said it was under the mangrove. They're responding to a call reporting a turtle that's been washed up on Gibbets oh, yeah. Beach, not far from the aquarium. Cool. What's that? So, little green, right? Yep. Little green. Wow. All right, let me go get the tub, Looks all right? Yeah, sure, man. All right, Patrick, you go get the tub and we'll get this guy back to the aquarium. All right, cool. Be right back. Green. All right, let me just see. So the first thing we're going to do is assess for any type of external injuries on this animal, see if he's been hit by a boat, if he's got any prop damage. I'm going to just take him into the ocean. I'm going to carry him. I'm going to rinse him off. This is one of the uh, many thousands of immature green turtles who spend their time here as they're growing up. And on my first exam, the great news is his carapace has not been injured. We quite commonly see prop cuts all the way through the shell, right the way through into the internal organs. This animal is not damaged. And again, so we look at his ventral surface, we look at his plastron, and his plastron is also intact. Hi, baby. He actually looks in pretty good shape. The only thing I would say is he's pretty quiet for a little green turtle. Normally, they'd be fighting me and trying to get away. He's maybe... He's maybe a little excessively buoyant. Yeah, he's floating a little too high. He should be able to be neutral to be able to pull himself down and sit on the bottom. 
and this guy's floating with a large part of his back out of the water. So he may have an accumulation of gas in his abdomen. He may have eaten something that's blocking his intestines. And so the gas is not escaping. So we're going to get him over to the aquarium and we'll get Dr. Ian Walker, who's the curator there. We'll get him to do a full and thorough examination of this turtle and we'll see if we can help him out. So yeah, if we want to get him up on the table, once we're gloved, I can do that. Dr. Ian Walker is chief curator at the Aquarium Museum and Zoo and has years of experience working with a myriad of different species, including right, turtles. Just hit that light for me. After a routine physical examination and x-ray, he has a suspicion of what the problem with this turtle might be. What we have right here is the trachea coming down and then breaking in the two, uh, two primary bronchi. Just like you or I. Exactly, yep. exactly. Um, now, interestingly enough, their lungs aren't sitting in a sort of, in the thorax, they don't have a diaphragm, so it's just sitting there in their salamic cavity. Um, and consequently, if they get overinflated, they float. But this right. is actually a normal reaction for sea turtles in the wild. So a sea turtle in the wild, when it's in trouble, will overinflate its lungs as a way of bringing it to the surface so that it can rest at the surface. That way, it doesn't have to expend effort every time it comes to the surface to breathe. Because remember, these are obligate air breathers. They have to be up there. Yeah, we've seen turtles like this before. And our current theory is that they probably ingested too much uh, jellyfish. Uh, so some of the nematocysts, well, they're getting a lot of nematocysts. These are the stinging cells right. from the jellyfish, are in their intestines, constantly stinging them and constantly delivering venom into their system. A little bit, so we'll see. We're going to just slide that in gently, so we're sliding it into the cloaca. Dr. Walker decides to perform an enema on the turtle to see if he can gather a sample of the stinging cells. Wow, so this is a nematocyst. This is what you're expecting to see? Yeah, this is exactly, based on the clinical signs of this animal, this is exactly what we thought we might see in this fecal. So it's proven this animal's eaten probably a jellyfish, uh, and presumably there's a lot more of these in the intestine. These nematocysts, when we look at them like this, we can see everything's coiled up inside them. It's really like a jack-in-a-box where the head of the jack-in-a-box is jammed inside the spring. And as the spring comes out, everything turns inside out like this. And then right at the end of it, there's a stinging needle with a bunch of venom in it. So if these things unload inside the turtle, they poison the turtle from the inside. Hopefully, this little turtle, after a few days under the care of Patrick, Roma, and Ian, is going to recover and hopefully we'll get a chance to release it back into the wild. This little turtle will remain at the Bermuda Aquarium Museum and Zoo until it's fully recovered. Neil will return later to release it back into the wild. Next up, Neil and Choi are back working with the Bermuda Turtle Project to fit a satellite tag to the shell of one of the larger green turtles they collected earlier. So the value of this type of tag is immense. Not only will it tell us the day-to-day, hour-to-hour movements of this turtle on and off his feeding site to his resting sites when he may be at risk crossing major boat channels, but also, if this turtle does go on his long-term migration, then we may be able to see what route this turtle uses to return towards the nesting site where he originated. The conservation of these turtles is truly an international venture, and that's what the Bermuda Turtle Project is all about. Okay, so this is the satellite tag, and it's the exact same company and exact same technology that we use on our tiger sharks. It's just a different model, so it can attach to a turtle shell, just like that. And this antenna here, what it will do is every time the turtle surfaces, it will relay data to a satellite and we will get real time movements on where this turtle is. So we will be able to track him almost as if he had a cell phone. Okay, looking good, I think. So yeah. we're almost ready to apply the tag. Pretty much got so rid Robert, of all I the think ridges. we'll let you do the honors for this. Yeah. And uh, here, I think you want to make a little ridge on the front. So I'll just keep the chopstick at the ready. All right. Just give it a nice squeeze down. Get it good and seated in the epoxy. So we're making sure that we have a nice, smooth attachment between the shell and the tag. With the tag firmly bonded to the turtle's shell, it's time for Neil and the team to release this beautiful animal back into the ocean. So after an epic day here, tagging and recording data from turtles, we're now going to let this girl go. We've named her Kirsty, And we're going to hope 
that this animal will actually leave Bermuda and go on its developmental migratory path and we can follow this animal to some destination in the Caribbean. Who knows where? I'm going to get in the water and make sure she swims away strongly. So I'll take her and try and hold her up right, right? Yeah. yeah. Just make sure she's comfortable in the water, takes a few breaths. Okay, just take the weight on the back for a sec until there. Perfect. Nice. All right, good grip. So I'm just going to wait for her to take a good breath and then I'm going to let her go. The release of this turtle marks the beginning of a research project which will have far wider reaching ramifications than the distance this turtle will travel in its lifetime. And it will help ensure the continued research and conservation of its entire species. Wow, so she took off like a rocket. As soon as I let her go, gone, out of sight, right? Wicked. <laughs> By working with these animals, Neil and his team have helped to ensure that green sea turtles are protected not just in Bermuda, but all over the world. These animals have a critical role in the ocean's marine ecosystem. By gathering samples and tagging these turtles, Neil and his team have ensured the continued fight for this animal's survival. Back at the aquarium, Neil and Choi have received good news about the sick turtle rescued earlier. So this is the little turtle that we brought into wildlife rehab a few days ago, and he's fully recovered from the ingestion of those poisonous jellyfish stinging cells. It's time for Choi, Patrick, and I to return him to the ocean. The turtle is being loaded onto the ocean vet boat, Bones. From here, Neil, Choi, and Patrick will transfer the turtle to its release site. Neil and the team have selected a location that is rich with seagrass beds, the perfect habitat for this juvenile green sea turtle to thrive. Thanks, Patrick. You're welcome. The Bermuda Turtle Project, the Stranding Network, and the conservation projects that support the research and protection of these marine turtles around the world make a profound difference, but there's still so much more that can be done. We wish this guy all the best. He has a tough road ahead as he continues on his epic journey. Good luck, little one. This little green sea turtle is once again free to roam the seagrass beds of Bermuda. It's thanks to the continued efforts from all the individuals featured in this program that the battle to get these turtles off the endangered species list may eventually be won. Next time on Ocean Vet, Neil and his team are on a rescue mission to save a prehistoric shark. They'll have to utilize all of their skills and expertise if they are to save this animal and ensure it returns safely back into the deep. <laughs>